This is a very basic summary of photosynthesis, a topic that students find quite difficult. This video is geared towards students taking the ordinary level paper and is useful for those students taking higher level but want an easier summary to begin with. A good place to start with photosynthesis is with the equation. It always appears on exam papers and you have to know the balanced version. And as well as that, it tells you exactly what's happening in the process. So carbon dioxide and water will be combined using light energy trapped by this green pigment chlorophyll to make sugar, glucose and oxygen. So from the equation then we can simply say that photosynthesis is the way in which green plants use light energy to make their own food. So green plants are using light energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose. Photosynthesis mostly takes place in leaves. However, if the stem of a plant is green, photosynthesis can take place in those plant cells also. So let's get even more specific as to where photosynthesis is taking place. We know that all plants are made of plant cells and plant cells contain these organelles known as chloroplasts. So photosynthesis is taking place in the chloroplasts of plant cells. Photosynthesis is split into two stages. Stage one is the light stage and stage two is the dark stage. So if we're going to study the light stage reactions, we need to know some important details. The first of which is the light stage reactions are also called the light dependent stage. Why? Because this stage depends on light. Light is essential. If there's no light, there's no light stage reactions. These reactions take place in the grana of the chloroplast. When you look inside the chloroplast, you see those thylakoids, those green discs stacked on top of each other. One stack is known as a granum and many granum is known as grana. The three products of the light stage are ATP, NADPH and oxygen and you need to know how each of those are produced. There are two possible pathways. Pathway 1 is known as the cyclic pathway. Pathway 2 is known as the non-cyclic pathway and this is where photolysis of water takes place. The reactions of the light stage are simply too fast to be enzyme controlled. We know that the light stage reactions take place in the grana, which are stacks of thylakoids in the chloroplast. So it's important to look at one particular thylakoid just to see the arrangement of pigment molecules. So pigment molecules are these chemicals that can absorb light energy, such as chlorophyll being the most important. And it's really important that we understand how the chlorophyll molecules and the other pigment molecules are set up or positioned in the thylakoids so that they can absorb all of this light energy. So just for our better understanding, let's look at one of the thylakoid membranes, one of those green discs. And you can see that in the membranes of the thylakoid are these two structures. These are known as photosystems, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. So let's examine one of these photosystems. So what is it? A photosystem is basically this protein structure that contains all of these pigment molecules arranged in just the right way so that the maximum amount of light energy is absorbed. There are many different types of pigment molecules, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B being two very important ones. Key to the photosystem is the reaction centre area here in the picture. The reaction centre has these special chlorophyll molecules called reaction centre chlorophylls and when light energy is passed from the other pigment molecules to the reaction centre chlorophyll, electrons can get energised and these electrons get picked up by an electron acceptor molecule. So the light dependent stage, the light stage reactions, there are two possible pathways, pathway one or pathway two. Pathway one is the cyclic pathway. Let's discuss what happens in pathway one now. So what are the details of the cyclic pathway? Well, light energy is absorbed by pigment molecules and it's passed from pigment molecule to pigment molecule until it reaches a reaction centre chlorophyll. This results in an electron being energised so much that it can leave chlorophyll. It's picked up by an electron acceptor molecule and eventually will pass over an electron transport chain where it loses that excess energy and that energy is used to make ATP. The big deal is that those energised electrons will one by one return to chlorophyll and the only product made is ATP. Still in the light stage, we're going on to pathway two, the non-cyclic pathway. And the reason why it's the non-cyclic pathway is because energized electrons leave chlorophyll, but they do not return. That's the big thing, they do not return. Pathway two, the non-cyclic pathway. So light energy is once again going to be absorbed by those pigment molecules and it's going to be passed eventually to the reaction centre chlorophyll. And when it receives all of this energy, it's going to result in an electron being energised from that reaction centre chlorophyll. When it's energised, it leaves chlorophyll and is picked up by an electron acceptor molecule. 
when this is picked up by the electron acceptor molecule, it eventually gets passed over an electron transport chain and loses energy where ATP is made from that lost energy. So the big deal is that the electrons do not return to chlorophyll. The energized electrons do not. Instead, two electrons at a time are going to be trapped by NADP plus to form NADPH, which is going to transfer them to the dark stage reactions. The big thing about the non-cyclic pathway was the fact that the electrons got energized and they did not return to chlorophyll. So chlorophyll needs replacement electrons and these will come from the photolysis of water. This is basically splitting water molecules using light energy. Energy. So when you split water molecules using light energy, you get three products. You get electrons, protons and oxygen. The electrons go back to chlorophyll to replace those lost. The protons go into a proton pool, but eventually we get picked up by NADP plus to form NADPH. So they're ultimately going to the dark stage reactions and the oxygen will either be used internally in the cell, the plant cell, for respiration or it'll get released to the atmosphere. So what are the products of the light stage? What are we leaving the light stage with? ATP was made in both pathway 1 and pathway 2. NADPH was made in pathway 2 and also oxygen was made in pathway 2 as a result of photolysis of water. So let's go on to the dark stage or stage 2 reactions. This is sometimes called the light independent stage because light is not needed but the products of the light stage are essential so we need the ATP and we need the NADPH because it's it's bringing effectively the electrons and the protons, which really are hydrogen. So what are the important details of the dark stage reactions? Well, we know it's sometimes referred to as the light independent stage, but it's also called the Calvin cycle. Light is not needed for these reactions, these dark stage reactions, but the products of the light stage are essential. These reactions take place in the stroma of the chloroplast, which is the liquid part of the chloroplast. And in this reaction, the dark stage reactions, basically what's going to happen is carbon dioxide will combine with the electrons and the protons, which are ultimately hydrogen, to form carbohydrate, which is glucose being the prime example, and the reactions are enzyme controlled in the dark stage. So a very basic outline of the dark stage reactions, we don't have to know very much detail at all. All we have to know is that carbon dioxide will combine with electrons and protons, they're being transferred by NADPH, the product that's made is glucose, and the reactions are fueled by the breakdown of ATP, which was made in the light stage reactions. So it might be worth our while examining what happens to the glucose that's made as a result of photosynthesis. Well, it's either used up in respiration, it's used to produce cellulose for new plant cell walls, it's stored as starch for later use, stored in chloroplasts and other parts of the plant. So the best of luck with your revision. Make sure you're using your textbook and you're doing past papers. Remember, these videos are not made for monetary gain and they're not intended for commercial use. And the icons I use from the Noun Project are credited here. I am a pro member, but I still wish to credit the artists.